Now there's multiple ways you can diversify across indices, across trade times, across types of strategies such as the profit or the drawdown changes drastically say by 60-70%. Show me the results if I traded this strategy only when the VIX was trading between 10 and 50. Hi guys, welcome back to Algo Test. In this video, we're doing something slightly different from our product videos or strategy guides or walkthroughs. Backtesting is a pretty useful tool for traders that want to trade using some validation and statistics. It's a great way to actually build trading strategies and validate your trading strategies or trading ideas. However, if you're a new trader or if you're someone that's probably experienced, you could be making a few mistakes that are holding you back in your algo trading journey. So in this video, we're going to talk about the top five mistakes that most algo traders, new or experienced, make when they're backtesting trading strategies. Stick around till the end of the video for an additional tip that'll probably help you even better your trading. Number one, curve fitting. Now curve fitting is a process of over optimizing your trading strategies to the point where they look fantastic on the results page of a backtest but when you trade them in the live market, they fail miserably. But why does this happen? Backtesting is done over static or stationary data, which is time series data, over a certain look back period. That could be five years or seven years or more based on the index and based on the data that you have. In these five, six, seven years, the market is constantly changing. It is not stationary. And therefore, if you build a strategy that is over optimized, wherein you have a stop loss that's exactly 23 points, or exactly 18 and a half percent, you're probably just doing too much and it is overkill. To the point where when you trade it in the live market, the statistics that are seen on the back test page will probably not match the live results and you'll be left falling flat on your face. To counter this, there's a few things you can do. On the results page of a back test on algo test, you can see a section that says curve fitting analysis. Now there are tools here that help you ascertain if your strategies are curve fit and how robust they are. An example is the in and out sample data split date, as well as the tool for the Monte Carlo analysis. We've made videos outlining how to use these tools and we'll link that in the description below. Two, sensitivity analysis. Now this kind of ties up with curve fitting. However, it's something that you should do even if your strategy isn't necessarily curve fit. Consider it as a little bit of a filter. Now what is sensitivity analysis? It's very simple. If I alter the inputs or the parameters of my trading strategy by very small amounts and it translates to a big change in the statistics or the results of the strategy, it's probably not going to do really well in the live market. For example, if I have a trading strategy where my stop loss is let's say 20% and then when I alter it to 19% or 21%, the profit or the drawdown changes drastically say by 60-70%, it's probably not going to do as well in the live market. It could potentially be curve fit as well. So add small changes in your back test results and see if it results in a huge change in the strategy results statistics. The parameters you could change are not just a stop loss, it could be your target profit, it could be your overall profit and so on and so forth. But just make sure you change it by very small amounts like 1% or 2% or 1 point or 2 points or 3 points. 3. Using other people's strategies and not using filters. So the first part of this mistake is when you hear somebody else's great trading strategy or great trading idea and you see their backtest result and you don't validate it for yourself before you trade it. Even if you're using somebody else's strategy, A, you should obviously backtest it and thoroughly research on when the strategy makes money, if it does truly make money in the live market or not. Second of all, even if you're using somebody else's strategy, use that as a template to see how you can better that strategy without obviously going too far down the rabbit hole of curve fit. Now, the second part of this mistake is not using tools like filters. Like I said, the market is not stationary, the market regimes, and so much is changing on a daily basis, pretty much. So one cool filter you can use to see what strategy to trade when is a filter like the VIX filter. So in fact, Mr. IT Jagan, who's a very famous trader and a YouTube personality as well, recommends this himself. And we've covered this in a different video as well as in our podcast with him. Essentially, you can add a filter in a particular strategy results page to see how it performed in that VIX regime. So for example, if I set 10 to 15 in the VIX filter section of my results page, I'm essentially trying to tell the back tester that, hey, show me the results if I traded the strategy only when the VIX was trading between 10 and 50. Four, not paper trading. Now I've seen people build strategies and then trade them straight away in the live market with their entire 
position sizing. That could go one of two ways. You could fall flat on your face or you could do really well. Now, even if a strategy is not perfect, there is some possibility that it might not work out. Therefore, to not suffer as many repercussions, you could do one of two things. Paper trade that strategy on algo test, for example, wherein you're trading with virtual currency and you don't really have to worry about making a loss. It's just going to be virtual. Or if you want to still trade it live, trade it with just one lot. This way, you can see if the strategy is making somewhat of the returns that the backtest results are showing you before you put any real money into it. Five, slippages and not doing a trade by trade analysis. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with what slippages are. Just in case you aren't, I'm going to leave a definition right here. Now, you can add slippages and brokerage charges, whatever you want to add, on the results page of a backtest on Algotest. Just select what slippages you'd want. You could start off with 0.5%, for example, or you could even add whatever charges and brokerage you want to add. This will obviously alter the statistics and the results of your strategy, because now we're looking at net profit and not so much gross profit. And just as important as this is doing a trade by trade analysis. Scrolling down to the bottom section on the results page of Algotest, you can see a section where it says full report. Now this is where every single trade that you've ever taken in this back test gets indexed so you can go through it one by one with the actual chart of that day and see when your strategy makes money and when it really loses. In this way, it can help you ascertain if the strategy is something that you want to even trade in the first place. If you stuck around this long in the video, here's your bonus tip. Putting all your eggs in one basket is a mistake. It might be beneficial to build a portfolio of strategies which are uncorrelated or low correlated. Why is this useful? Well, the idea is if some strategies are not making money that day, other strategies might and your loss of that for that day might not be as high or you might even make some sort of a profit. Now, there's multiple ways you can diversify your portfolio, such as across indices, across trade times, across types of strategies such as non-directional, directional, mean reverting via signals, that is trading with indicators, which you can do on Algotest as well, and so much more. When you build this portfolio with multiple strategies, then you can go to the Algotest portfolio page and see how these strategies perform in unison. You could be optimizing for a certain number. For instance, if I'm optimizing for return to max drawdown, which is commonly referred to as the Kalmar ratio, I will see if trading these strategies in unison results in a higher RMDD versus their individual RMDDs. Or another thing could be, does, is my overall drawdown lower when I trade these strategies together versus when I'm trading them individually? So thanks for watching this video, guys. It was a different video and we had quite fun helping people out and talking about some of the struggles that we've seen our own customers and other algo traders face. If you'd like to see more content like this, please like this video, subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. See you in the next one.